Hi guys, and welcome to this Model Engineers Workshop. Today in the workshop, are we standing building or building a stand? Hi guys, I'm the chef. Today we're going to be looking at making a locomotive stand because these frames are getting big and heavy and uh, I need the space on the bench as well and they're just taking up too much bench space. So what I'll do, I think, is, yeah, I'll show you what my thoughts are. Uh, I'm a little bit ahead of the game. I'm kind of did a bit of proof of concept for my own self here. So I'll just turn you around so you can see what I've got. Okay, so that is kind of half of an engine stand, I think they're called. So something that you work, you take an engine out of a car or a truck or whatever, and uh, you bolt it into the thing. And it allows you to work on it without to dive in deep into the belly of a, of a car or truck. Now, in this hole here goes the head. And as you can see, it has a locking pin, which will allow me to rotate uh, the head itself. Just got it here in the vise. We'll go in from that way. This plate here is normally what you bolt the engine to. It goes in that way, really. But uh, that's just going to make life awkward, I think, for me. So let me just get you up back on the ground. There you go. That will go in there like that. Now, the problem with these engine stands, I've got two. I've got one at the other end of that, uh, that shaft down there, uh, which I had to get from a scrapyard. I was a scrapyard fine. The only problem with having two of these things is they're not actually vertical. They do that. Obviously, so it makes it easier to work on the engine, but I don't know. The thing, these things are rated to 450 kilos, I think it is. So they might just, seems unlikely, but they might just square up when you've got an engine on them. And I'm not sure. So what I'll do, bring it back to the bench, is I've been having a play and a think. Now, this little thing here, this is 12 mil, I'll explain that in a second. This is just a piece of 25 by, well, it was 12 ordinary steel bar. And I've milled that down to 11. So it goes in between the coupling on the locomotive at the front and the back. Before I did that, of course, I centered it in the lathe, turned that to 12 mil. I put a little bobbin on it. Now, a little, can you see that? There's a little drop in there. Yeah. Now, this wonderful thing at the back here. This is a universal joint. It's actually for a steering shaft out of a car. So it comes with little rub screws, which you can see there. It came, even came with its own Allen key. So when I get those installed, my thought is it can kind of go in like that. That little bobbin that I've turned will allow the grub screws to actually not slide out, but still be able to tighten them down. Now, of course, for the head, this is where this chunk comes in. This is 65. The hole in the head, as he turns around, the hole in here is 55. So we need to take this and turn a shot, turn it down at 55, put a shoulder on it so we end up with a nice flange going around that will bump up against this. I'm going to try and make that a hammer fit so it doesn't need any bolts or anything. And then we're going to turn this bit down. Lots of turning, lots of uh, scrap, unfortunately. Again, to a spindle of 12 mil diameter that will then go onto that side of the universal joint. And of course, with this being that way and the other one being that way, the universal joint will allow the locomotive to hang flat. These heads on these engine stands also allow you to rotate, although I'm not going to turn the locomotive completely upside down. It would allow me to turn it 45 degrees that way, 45 degrees this way. And We'll take it from there. That should just allow me to have the bench space back. It's going to take up a fair chunk of floor space, unfortunately, but hey, I think that's the price you pay. And I think these being suitable for a steering shaft on a car, I think they will take a fair, good, fair amount of loading. The locomotive itself, when it's done, probably weigh, I don't know. I dare say once I've got the boiler on it and everything, it's not going to go in the stacks. It'd be too heavy to pick up anyway. But just while I'm getting the frames together, it'll help me for getting bits on and off, uh, maybe even a bit of the painting of the inside or stuff like that, spraying. 
because it doesn't matter what color I turn the frame, of course, the, uh, and the two stands in the bar across the bottom, they could be black, red, blue, green, pink with purple spots. It doesn't matter. So plan of action for today. As I say, I've just explained how I made that. Didn't take very long. So we're just going to do returning this piece today. So we're going to face it off, uh, turn the shoulder on, put it back in the chuck the other way around, turn this side down to uh, 12 mil by 15. You need 15, 12, yeah, 15. So I need 20 mil left at this end. The rest can be turned so it fits inside the head of the engine stand. And um, when I get that done, I'll bring you back. It's going to be a lot of turning. If it gets too long, I will edit it down or speed it up. But get to the other end. I think I've got an interesting idea because, of course, with the two stands doing this, and unfortunately, there's no real way you can make them do that. That wouldn't help you either anyway. Uh, this just takes out all that problem of maybe it getting tight or your jams or you're stuck with it and you can't get it out. But this will just allow everything to stay in line and rotate the way it wants. Right, I'm going to get this in the lathe and we'll get going. All right, guys, bring it back when I'm there. Right, guys, so this is that chunk of 65 mil diameter steel in the four jaw self-centering chuck, nice and secure, 45 deep. I need to take, I need to keep 20 at the other end so I can face this off, take, I'm going to face it off, flip it around, face the other side. The other side's got a bit of a hole in it, as I showed you before. And then I'm going to take uh, 20 down to fit into the head of the engine stand, which will hopefully I've managed to get that, managed to get that to be a hammer fit so it's not going to wobble loose on us. Right guys, so let's get this faced off, flipped around and then we can start the proper turning on the other side. <laughs> There we are, just touched off. Now we'll start facing it. Looks like we're almost there, guys. Not much more now. Yep, that'll do us. This little piece over here won't matter because it's going to get turned away eventually anyhow. Right, let me just flip that round and we can start turning the bit that goes into the head on the engine stand. I've just got to find my centre punch, there it is. And we need to 
I believe 20 at the back for the flange and the spigot, of course. Let me just grab a ruler. Oh, the verniers, that'll do. And just see how much we've got we can play with. Oh yeah, we'll clear the jaws at that. Pretty sure. Yes, easy peasy. Right, let's get this faced off and then we'll take some proper measurements. Did I tighten that down, guys? No, I'm double checking at all. Right, there we go. I did have it. Right. So let's get this faced off and get this flange shoulder cut. So that's cleaned up. Let's see what the actual length of this thing is now. It was about 45. Now we've faced off both ends. It's going to be about 42 and a half. So I need 20 at the end. 22 and a half is the distance we can go. 22 and a half is going to be eight turns and 110 divisions. Really? Goodness me. 22? Really? Yeah, eight turns. All right, guys. So. Let me just send get that onto a zero. Just setting the dial here, guys. Then we can get the lathe going and get a, a touch off on the outside. Here goes. Right, let's uh, take a clean up cut first. Eight turns and 110 divisions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight and a hundred and ten. And there we go. Look at that. Nice. Oh, the finish on that, that's lovely. Wow, smooth as hell. Right, so we've got to get this down to 55 when we're all said and done. Let me just put that out of the way. And we are now at. 55, of course, is the internal diameter of that tube on the engine stand head. We're now at 64 and 5, no, less than 5, 4. 64.4, so we've got to get almost 10 mil off the diameter. All right, guys, now it's nice and clean. We'll be able to take some decent sized cuts and uh, take it from there. Here goes.
all being well that was two mil it's probably you could hear the lathe laboring a little bit i'll go a little bit lighter next one we were at 64.4 this would suggest we're at 62.4 which happens to be exactly the case right so let's take let's say we've got to go down to 60 55 60 so we've got 7.4 mil to go all right let's uh go maybe a little bit lighter let's go 30 uh, 0.3 mil each side so 0.6 mil that was two no that can't be right 0.6 well 1.2 millimeter off the diameter every cut now should get us down to about 60. We need to get down to 55. Let's have a quick look. Oops, come on. We can do it. There we go. So yeah, 60.15. Right. This is going to take a couple of minutes, guys. I'll stop it and I'll bring it back when I get there. Right, guys. So we're almost down to 55. It's got a lovely finish on it. It's dead smooth. Uh, just going to take off another point two just to give it a little bit of a hopefully a hammer fit into there so i don't need to any cross drilling or anything right last cut and then we'll turn around and get the other side done <laughs> There we go, that should be a hammer fit by now. Let's just grab the head, see what we think. Yes, that will do us. It's just trying to enter now. Yeah, right, that'll be able to hammer in. Okay, so let's get this final center punch. There it goes, number one. Let's turn this around. Now you can see the idea behind turning that shoulder first. Is I can now hold this up against the shoulder on the and the shoulder up against the chuck jaws. There we go. Right. So now we're going to turn 15 mil of this down to 12 mil spigot in the middle, so it'll fit inside that universal coupling. 15 mil is five whole turns and 115 divisions. I'll do the first couple of cuts, then I'll. Uh, Drop you out at that, guys. Uh, there's no point you watching me do that. I'll bring you back once uh, I get it down to 15. There's a fair amount of steel to come off this. I'm just setting zeros while I'm talking to you. So that's that one. Okay, right. Don't need to worry about that one because it's going to be turned away. Right, here goes, guys.
Right, guys, you get the idea. I'll bring you back when I get it down to 12 now. Right, guys, so got this down now to 12.15. So we're almost fitting into the little universal. So we're going to uh, set the lathe to take off 0.1 and we'll sneak up on this very slowly. Get a nice sliding, nice easy fit. And uh, then we'll get the groove cut for the grub screws. So that's point one. Whoa, that is so close. Right. We'll take another point one off, which will make us at 11.95. And that should be a fit. So here we go. Let's have a look see now, shall we? Oh, look at that. I got that little grub screw in too far, maybe. Nope, nope, it's quite tight. Okay, I'm gonna take another tiny little bit off. Let's take literally some dust off that and we'll make it fit. Lovely finish, admittedly. Ah, that's what we wanted. Right. So, let's make a mark on the shaft, spigot, whatever you want to call it with the grub screw so we know where to put the groove with the parting tool. Get in there, that's it. Tighten that up quite a bit. It'll leave a little mark behind. Let's have a look. Right, I don't know if you can see that, but I know I can. And if you can see where the grub screw has just taken a little bite into the shaft there. I'll change to my Wide parting tool. There we go. And this is all just by eye. Nothing serious. Let's wind in. And what I've been doing is I've been taking basically a cut and a half at it. So once I'm happy with the position of the first cut, going in just enough to make a little bit of a bobbin, then coming out, moving towards the chuck by about half a width of the cut, the parting tool, and having another bite. So here goes. That's the first cut, half at all. There we go. Why not tool out the way? Now that will have raised a couple of burrs. So I'll just move that out of the way as well, the saddle. And we'll just put a few fire, a few chamfers on again, as always. File with a handle. All being well. It should, yep, certainly goes over that. And those will now lock into that little groove that I've cut and prevent it from sliding off. Yep, nicely. Right, I'll just quickly loosen that. 
So that's this part done. Now what we've got to do is hammer this into the head of the engine stand. And we can actually, no, I'll tell you what, I'll go onto the bench and put these three bits together. And uh, you can see what my thoughts were. There we go. Right, so that's the job so far. Nice little universal joint. Uh, I'll see you on the bench in a second. Right, so now on the bench, here's the chunk we just turned. This is the hammer fit, of course. That's got the little universal joint on it. You can see it does manage to go in every direction. This is the piece which I unfortunately didn't record. But as again, I'll just tell you, it was a piece of 12 by 25. Put it in the fore jaw, centered it up, turned the spigot 12 to fit into the little universal joint just here. And uh, which it does, I'll just loosen those rub screws off. There we go. And again, because I turned a little bobbin into that, it's into a little bobbin. It's got somewhere for those grub screws to go into so it, it doesn't pull out. And so you can imagine now, as I've said before, with these engine stands, they lean slightly outwards. So any inconsistency, as much as it's only probably going to be that much, it will allow me to do those 45 degrees without stressing anything without having to bolt anything solid in there. And uh, we should be fine. Right, so I'm gonna loosen this one off now and get the whole thing down on the floor. I'm not gonna bang around on, that, on the bench, it'll make everything bounce off. And uh, I'll get this hammered in, and once that's in, I'll bring you back. All right, guys, give me a couple of minutes. Right, so that's now been hammered in. I did just have to put it back in the lathe just to turn a little bit of that flange off because it wouldn't pass through the head. It was just another two too big. And uh, so now we can put this uh, joint back on here. I won't turn it up too greatly because I need to slide it around. Once we get lining up for the coupling on the locomotive, I've got the pin, coupling pin ready. So that when things line up through there, the coupling and then through this and it'll all be held down tight. I've just got to loosen the bolt that's holding it onto the cross shaft at the bottom so I can slide this head up a little bit to make it match the length of the loco. So just give me a second guys, I'll find my spanner, loosen that and I'll bring you back. Righto guys, so a bit of a time now for an action shot. Hold this with one hand, get it uh, in the right kind of place, lift the frames and Hopefully get the two to match. I've moved the head along to the right kind of distance. There we go. Let's have a look see. Oh, that was easier than I expected. Just hold it in place. Drop the pin in. Oh, great stuff. Right. Oh, that was easier than I expected. Okay, right. Let me get this to a position where... Uh, Everything swings free. It's lovely. Where I can get you a bit of a better shot of the whole thing now. Okay, guys, give me a second to move things around. Right. Well, there we go. The two heads, and you can see on that one, definitely leans this one, this way. This one is leaning this way. So the universal couplings here and at the other end, of course, are uh, doing their job. A little locking pin. Can you just see that? You can. There's one in the other end as well. Hey. Yeah, give it a little bit of freedom, but not a lot. There we go. Not that I want to be able to turn the locomotive upside down anyway. So I know I've seen people in the past, they're kind of clamped over here, and then they, they say to you, oh, well, you can turn it over just about if you want to, or you can turn it. But, of course, it's trying to then pull and twist the frames in the funny direction. Right. Well, that was a weekend job, was that? Okay. Um, yeah. Just give me a second, guys, and I'll set up and we'll have another quick chat as we clip bring this video to a close. All right, give me a second. Righto, guys, that'll bring this video for today to a close. Uh, useful project, looks really good. Uh, it's come out nicer than I thought it would. I was a bit of an experiment with those universal joints. Uh, it's not uh, going to be any problems down the track, I hope. I think I'm just looking at it now, sorry. Uh, it does take the misalignment of the two heads out of it, which is what I wanted in the beginning. Uh, it looks really good with the frames 
the right way up and everything hanging how it should be. I can play with the brake levers as much as I like now and they just swing back and forwards like a pendulum. Right, so that's this one coming to a close, guys. So I'll do like I always do. If you can find it in your heart and soul to give me a like, a subscribe, hit the bell, please, just to get the notifications when the videos come out every second Sunday here in South Australia at 12 noon. If you're a watcher out there, guys, please, please, it'll help the analytics. It helps me personally, uh, just having all your, of your subscribers. If you're a watcher, please subscribe. That's all I can ask. If you find it interesting enough, pass it on, let your mates know. Maybe they'll subscribe as well. All right, guys, this is The Chef signing out for now, saying see you later.